And now we'll be moving uh, to China and to understand better China's single power market and how green PPAs play a role. And for that, I have with me the Director of Sustainability at the Lantau Group. The Lantau Group is Asia Pacific's premier energy focus uh, strategy uh, consulting uh, firm. With us is uh, Jenny Zhang. Thanks for being with us. Uh, I'm honored to be invited to give, uh, share some of the latest China power market progress with uh, the distinguished uh, industry players in Europe. Because I, I uh, don't know what's your uh, average understanding level of China market, so I will start from the basic, basic introduction. And we can uh, leave the questions in detail to, uh, to the afternoon discussion panel. As some of you may heard of this China 3060 uh, mission or goal, it's announced by Premier Xi Jinping in uh, 2020. Basically, it means that uh, we will, we will uh, become carbon neutral before 2060. That's 2060 is the, the final year. And then we net back to 2030, we'll peak the carbon emission by 2030. And to that purpose, we, we further split down the milestones to 2025. So basically, we, we set 2020 as the baseline, the emission level as the baseline and the consumption. So here, uh, there's a concept difference between China and the European. When you talk about the uh, uh, emission cap, you talk about the absolute emission cap, but we hear China talk about the, uh, we call emission intensity. That is uh, emission, total emission divided by the unit GDP. So we target that. Uh, it's also a very aggressive, uh, aggressive target because as uh, you may know, after the crisis, China and also we have suffered a three year in a row, the great drought. The, the, high, the water level is so low that China has to recommission the old coal power plants and build aggressively new coal, power, coal fired power plants. If we're still targeting at, uh, for example, 13.5% uh, 13 13 uh, emission intensity, energy in intensity decrease, that's, that's very uh, challenging goal. The general roadmap for carbon uh, reduction is very similar to what you, you have in Europe. First of all, we will uh, cut the energy, energy consumption, the total absolute number by increasing the energy efficiency. Uh, look at your power bill and identify the main items of your energy consumption and try new approach, new technologies to reduce those absolute power uh, energy consumption. And secondly, we will use the renewable substitute. For example, the on-site PPA and offset PPA is becoming so popular in the coastal region to replace the coal-fired power and the steam. Sometimes it's steam. If you can uh, uh, apply the electrified steam boilers. And certainly, uh, some very advanced technologies are being invented and, and applied in new areas. For example, the uh, green hydrogen steel. The steel plant will use hi green hydrogen to replace coking, coking coal and the electrified chemicals, uh, high pressure steam boilers is also under testing. And lastly, uh, if uh, cu industry customer have done all they can, but still have, have uh, uh, emission, then they will uh, purchase uh, carbon credits or carbon sink uh, solutions to green, green ties those uh, uh, unbalanced emissions. This is an uh, example on the, on the left. That's a uh, uh, Walmart, it's a paper making factory uh, headquartered in, in uh, Finland. And they have uh, three big uh, world class paper making plants in China. And we will look at the layout of uh, each plant 
and uh, design a roadmap for next five year, 10 year, and then 15 year. And they start with uh, some uh, energy audit or, emission, or, or energy and the emission audit to understand where they spend mostly in the energy bills. And then uh, they will discuss the, the offsite and onsite PPA solutions. This is a map uh, of China. Uh, basically, I want to highlight that uh, in China, there are currently there are nine renewable production base. Those uh, green spots are the nine renewable product, production bases, super, super large. In the uh, northwest China, those are basically wind and solar production sites. In the west uh, south China, that's uh, wind, solar, plus hydro, uh, including, uh, as you, you, you are familiar, the three gorges, th those are in uh, central China and the southwest China. The problem is we are suffering the great drought in the last three years in a row, and the raining belt is moving north. So normally we have a lot of rains in the south and in central China uh, uh, in winter and the spring season, but now these uh, raining that are moving north to used to be very dry and, and, and windy areas. So that's uh, climate change caused all the, all the uh, uh, renewable production base uh, not, genera not ge generating as planned. The coastal provinces are the demand center. So we'll see many uh, high voltage transmission lines transmitting electricity from uh, 3,000 to 4,000 uh, kilometers away in the west, uh, northwest and northeast, all the way down to central China, east China, and the south China. That that's, uh, involves billions of dollars of investment. And some of these investments are not uh, so uh, effective because either the demand the demand center is not ready to pay that uh, super high transmission cost or the re uh, renewable production base is not being developed as planned. So it's, it's, uh, it's always uh, unbalanced the development on, on the demand side and the generation side. This chart gives you a brief idea how uh, China moved from the 100% vertical regulated market to now um, we call it a, a national single power market deregulated. In the past, uh, before 2015, China is, uh, remains basically 100% vertical integrated. The great company the, is the only buyer to all the generators and the only seller to all the customers. After 2016, it's become uh, like, uh, like this. The residential customers and uh, agricultural customers are still buying electricity from the grid company at a regulated price, which is art artificially low because the central government wants to subsidize residential and the agricultural sector. And all the other commercial and the industry, uh, including some government uh, facilities, uh, hospitals, universities, they move into the power market. They buy from either uh, directly from generator or they can buy from a uh, retailer or wholesaler power supplier, whatever you, you can name them. And or they can still remain in the uh, great, great company supply uh, menu, they call it the supply menu. That's, that's, uh, they have three, at least uh, three options. There's a, a threshold for CI customer to enter the wholesale market, means they can trade in the uh, power exchange. Their annual consumption has to be uh, more than two gigawatt per year. So that's the only threshold. If you, you meet, hit that target, you can choose your genera uh, generators directly in the exchange. However, very few CI customers, uh, although they, their consumption way beyond two gigawatt hour per year, they, they still to, uh, opt to, my, to buy electricity or gas from, from a supplier because the trading rules still evolving and every six, six months you will see a new version of trading rules. The industry customers, especially, there are not, no, not many uh, 
uh, very competent and uh, qualified uh, energy procurement managers out there in the market because it's uh, such a short, short uh, history of deregulation. So they are not confident to buy by themselves to make the procurement decision as uh, Yang just uh, described how uh, this year for next year and the rolling uh, next uh, three years. So there, there's no such thing in, in, in China yet. This is a statistical map about what's happened in uh, 2002, last year. The deregulation ratio is, uh, has hit 61% nation, n nationwide. As you can imagine, in, in coastal areas, the, the deregulation ratio is higher than, though, than that in the, in the central China and the west China. So the more uh, economically developed, the higher deregulation ratio. And they, they are driven by the commercial, uh, the commercial incentives. But in the, in the inner land China, they are less deregulated, they are less economic driven. And on the pie, pie chart, you can see that the green PPA, or you call it offside PPA, is very small. By volume, it only accounts for 0.4% uh, in, in China. That is because it was, the, the market was opened in uh, sub, September 2021. And last year, people just are getting to understand what uh, offside PPA means by itself. And very few customers uh, test a little bit in the monthly forward market or annual forward market. And this year we see uh, uh, conferences and, and workshops coming out and, and hundreds of uh, industry customers, particularly those, uh, those European and American companies with operations in China, they are interested to discuss offset PPA, at least for three years. Uh, one year or, or months ahead, forward markets is open uh, in coastal area. I will show the map later. But the long term, 10 year and above, corporate PPA is still very rare in, 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 the, in the market. This is a very de detailed slide about how the central government want to proceed with the deregulation. It's not a fully deregulated. Uh, for example, we only have the energy market, the commodity market, and it's only treating, treated in the, in the forward annual and monthly forward market. There's no capacity market, there's no future market, so uh, there's no hygiene solutions yet. But that's the plan the China market, China central government want to uh, move towards the, the European model. So to starting, starting from 2021, that's the year we suffered the first uh, great drought. And there's a, there's a supply shortage in summer, in peak summer. Uh, because China have a, a cap and a ceiling for the commodity uh, electricity price, so you don't feel the price surge like what you see in, in Europe. But people do suffer a rolling blackout. So if there's no, no coal plants want to generate at a loss, then they just shut down their, their power plants and the great company will apply the rolling black uh, starting from the, uh, those high, high, e high uh, emission or high energy intensive industries. Um, so we, we suffer a nationwide power crunch in September 2021. Since then, Central government de decided to push all the coal power plants into the market, and meanwhile they will uh, enlarge the fluctu fluctuation range for the commodity price, and that solved uh, the crisis for a while. But since then, the, the deregulation process has been accelerated more f faster than ever before. In 2022, we see. Uh, the central government launched PPA template contracts. Before that, the, each market, each province, even uh, each supplier has their own uh, PPA template. They can design the main terms and the conditions as they like it. But after 2022, the annual contract and the monthly contract are either standardized in an electronic e-trading platform or there's a, a template, it's a national template. You can apply with uh, and you can add some uh, appendixes according to your specific needs and wants. 
as I mentioned, the, the green PPA one year term green PPA offset offset PPA supply solution was introduced in in 2021 and surging in 2022. In this year, 2023, the focus is to promote uh, green PPA, multi-year green PPA with fi fixed price. But we, we see a lot of discussions, but very few, uh, very few cases actually announced so far. I, I will explain why, uh, why the, uh, the government want to promote it, but in reality, it's, is slowing down. And next year, the target is to uh, introduce the ancillary service cost. In the past, all tariff is mainly energy based. We, we don't, uh, the industry customers are not exposed to ancillary service costs or system costs, or any, they, they do not pay any capacity charge. So this, this will be changed in the next two years. The ancillary services or the system, great system operating cost will be applied and uh, the capacity market will be introduced by 2025. This is about the voluntary green, energy, uh, green PPA market. Why I said it's um, voluntary because uh, it's actually demand driven market. Uh, some, some European, the US companies, uh, they are, they are uh, either Apple supply chain or a BMW supply chain. They want to enter 10-year offset PPA, but back uh, three years ago, there was no such thing. So it's uh, popping up from the, from the customer end, and they organize association, the Green Energy so Association, and lobbying the central government for such a special market, and that was introduced uh, last year. You, you see uh, they are either uh, demand driven along the coastal line or they are uh, supplier driven in the, in the uh, renewable production base. The renewable producers, they, they also are interested, strongly interested in entering 10-year corporate PPA to lock their own uh, dispatch risk. If, for example, if you are in the inner, inner land, there's no... Uh, uh, no potential for the demand increase, no big potential for the demand increase. If they want to uh, get a permit to build a, a world-class renewable projects, they need to have a, a long-term PPA to back up their, their investment. The coastal line and the inner land both have, uh, you, you have seen at least a three to five year corporate offsite corporate PPA today. This is a, a to differentiate. So on the left, it's uh, the end user. They just uh, consider three main, main things. Either it's a short term, you can buy from the great company a set menu. A set menu means you can buy 30% renewable and 70% uh, traditional power. Or you can, you can ask for 50-50. That's a set menu listed on the e-trading elect electronic platform. Or you can buy one year, we call it short term, one year or a few months, uh, six months, three months, green PPA, so 100% renewable. But that's only offered when there's a, supplies, a surplus of supply in the market. And the long term 10 year car PPA is popping up, is emerging quickly. And we'll, we see many, many uh, announcements of a collaboration. Uh, letter of intent signed between BSF and its supplier and, and et cetera. But in reality, none of these have been implemented yet. And the last is the just a green energy certificate. It's an official certificate announced by the central government. And it's also, it's, it's not well recognized by European customer or American customer yet, but it's a, the only recognized uh, uh, rack in, in China. The trading of this rack, the GEC, is quite popular because uh, the, great, the, the great company feels uh, very difficult to transport re renewable electricity from far away to the demand center. But the trading, the transaction of GAX is very easy. It's just a financial arrangement by, by contract, by paper. On the right side, that's, the, that's all the different various uh, contracts in the wholesale market. Currently, as I mentioned, the, the industry and the commercial customers, they are not exposed 
to to wholesale market. They are not trading in the in the exchange, so they don't or they don't they they don't understand fully what all these contracts mean and the risk and the benefits. They just look at the fixed price written in their short-term PPA or long-term PPA. So that's all various of uh, of uh, certificates now available in China. The first two, the first two are the uh, official official certificates, and uh, as I mentioned, the GC, the Green Electricity Certificates, is the the, the only recognized official certificates. And the second is associated. That's we call. The first one is a generation certificate. The second is a consumption certificate. There is a gap. That's the transmission loss. There is a, a five to six different percent difference represents the tra transmission loss. But basically, they are they are we call they are uh, bundled together for most uh, most uh, offset PPA signed. This is a timing. If you are interested in discussing uh, offset PPA. That's the timing. Um, for long term, you have to start at least six months ahead of the start date of your PPA. For one year contract, uh, two, two months ahead of the start date of your uh, one year green PPA. And if you want some additionality of your uh, uh, green, in, uh, green energy, then you may start even before they acquire their permitting, etc. That's three uh, case study. The first one is the BSF. That's the number one, the first one ever signed a 25-year corporate PPA with a fixed price with a local uh, renewal supplier. But this contract is still uh, under, under finalization because uh, the China government decided to introduce ancillary, ancillary service market and a capacity market which was not there when they signed the, the framework agreement. And after the change in the regulation, they re reopened the negoti re reopen this negotiation. The second is the cholesterol, also a German, German chemical major. They are based in Shanghai, and they entered the, the first in, in Shanghai 10-year offset corporate PPA, and this is being implemented from January 1st of this year. And they, they, they are not adopting a fixed price, they are adopting a floating price. They just move, move with uh, uh, the monthly forward contract. And the last one is a purely 10-year contract for, uh, for procurement of GEC, the certificate. And this GEC price is um, uh, is under is under the uh, carbon carbon allowance. China have a ETS market as well because it's under it's below the China carbon allowance prices. It's still suspended because the China there are so much uh, government intervene supposed not to be there. But the government thinks uh, the green certificates should be at the same value or more high, more expensive than uh, carbon emission allowances. They, they should, the prices of carbon and the green certificate should be linked to some extent. So this contract also uh, suspended, not, not being implemented for that reason. This is the last slide, some brief introduction of uh, Lantau Group. If you are interested, we also operate in, uh, in Korea, uh, Thailand, uh, Australia, uh, Singapore, and the Philippines. So we have offices in different countries of Asia Pacific region. Thank you for your time.